Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Happy to be here today. Thomas Schlick, my name. I'm partner at Roland Berger. And uh, I hope this works. Uh, sorry for that. Yeah. I want to tell you a little bit about our view on the future of the automotive industry. And looking back for, for more than 100 years, we did more or less a same job. Uh, we produce the cars, we are selling the cars, the cars getting better and better, but that's all on the same style. And that will change, and we call it MATE. Uh, like English, machen, mate. Yeah? These are the four factors we are seeing at Roland Berger, which are driving the change of the automotive industry in the next years. First of all, it's a mobility, electric. We all started 2010 to, uh, uh, talking about new electric cars, but that's not all. As you know, as you see at the IAA, it's autonomous driving. This will come, will face the challenges. Then you will have mobility, new mobility solutions car sharing, ride sharing, and so on. And then last but not least, the things, digitalization. And this all will change our complete business model in the future. And how it will change, I will tell you in the next minutes to come. Which are the main factors? As you see, uh, sorry. Uh, as you see, we have uh, impact and, and uncertainty. And you see on the, the left-hand side, uh, electrification, city regulations, and all these things. But the main two levers which really will change the automotive system, the automotive industry, are first of all the automatic driving, driving level four in cities, the most challenging thing, I would say, and on the second hand, customer acceptance. And we are all talking normally at the automotive guys, we are talking of new technologies, new cars, new technologies, but we are normally not talking what the customer really wants. And that's also a new challenge for us at the automotive industry. We need to uh, be aware of what the customer wants and to accept that the customer sometimes don't want to have this new technology. For that reason, it's very important to really think of the customer. I will tell you, show you a short, short survey later on. So what does it mean for the future? Looking into the future to 20, 30 plus, you can see we have uh, build up four different scenarios, and on the right-hand side over there, the automotive 4.0 automotive driving scenario. That means you have complete everything is really uh, uh, connected, yeah, and everything is accepted also by the customer. That means that you have got the technology, and the customer will accept the technology. You will have seamless mobility. You have ride sharing. You have car sharing, and all these things, and that will really change our automotive system, our automotive system of the future. Looking here, you can hear the production uh, figures from 2007 to 2015, uh, nearly 80 million cars. And if you're doing the same business as usual, it will come up to more than 110 million cars in 2013. 30. But if you really have this change, the big mobility change, you have the ride sharing, you have the car sharing, you have all the new technologies in place that will be accepted by the customer, then you really have a really reduced volume of cars. And that's really a big challenge for us because you don't not have only 60 million cars, you will have a peak in 2025 or so, but you also will have, and that's very interesting, other cars. The cars of the automotive drive cars look at, have another shape, another challenge than the cars you see today. And this will really change the complete automotive value change. Your profit pools will come up and that will uh, be the challenge for the next 10 to 15 years. Nobody knows there are really 60 million cars or so, but everybody knows we are working on that. New players are coming into this automotive system and they will change it. And they will all look for new profit pools. And that's, I think, the issue we have to deal with. You can see that the dark one is the profit pools of uh, the OEMs and of the OES coming to 60% and uh, the, the global profit pools in 2000 and nearly 70% in 2015, and they will go down to 36% in 2030. It's really a big change, and then you have new profit pools, new profit pools, new services, new profit pools for the robocabs, that's the blue one, and this will really come up to 40%. And now they think the race is on, you see it here at the IAA, that everybody will look for these new profit pools, which really will have uh, probably a high margin for everybody in the future. So that's a look into the future. And nobody knows really how this future mobility system will look like. But everybody is working on this, and for sure, 
It will look other shape in Singapore than it will be in Essen or in Frankfurt or wherever in the world. But this will change, and that's a big challenge, and that's the reason why all the new players here uh, sitting here in the IAA and looking for these new profit pools. So what's the stage in Germany or in other countries worldwide? I think that's a very important question because we are seeing a lot of new technologies here, a lot of new cars, mostly these are show cars, a uh, lot of new ideas of new seamless mobility systems. And for that reason, uh, we uh, uh, developed the automotive disruption radar, just published a couple of days before. And then you can see all different factors. It's a customer interest, regulation, technology, infrastructure, and also industry and uh, activity. And then we have a look into the future and look which are the stage actually, which is a stage of the country, which is the ranking of the countries. Um, and what is really the customer expecting? Is he open for new technology or not? I think that's one of the main questions I touched it already. For that reason, we did a survey. You can see the countries over there uh, with more than uh, 11,000 people asking the questions of mobility or not of striving, digitalization, electrification. And you can see at the right-hand side that only 35% are really open for electrified cars. So 75% 70, are really, 65% are not really open for electrified cars. That really should be changed in the future. But where they are open, you can see it on the left-hand side, uh, mobility and autonomous, nearly 50% are open really for new mobility concepts. Because we all have leasing cars, actually. We don't own our car like we did a couple of years ago. And for that reason, I think we are more open for ride-sharing, car-sharing, and this is increasing uh, than open for electrified cars. But however, there's a long way to go in order to establish this new mobility systems of the future. So what's the ranking, actually? What do we expect? What will be the ranking of these uh, different uh, countries? And you can see, interesting thing, you probably might know it, but Netherlands is leading. It's leading in this change, actually, in these factors I described already, customer behavior, industry acceptance, and so on. Why? Because uh, I think they have the infrastructure. They have the electric infrastructure, they have the electrification, the charging stations on the one hand, and on the other hand, uh, the Netherlands people are open for new technology. They are open, and you can see that they use a Tesla, for example, going for skiing uh, in Austria and so on. China, second place. Uh, why? Because there's a strong push in regulation on the one hand. That's the reason why China is in the second place. And on the other hand, you would say the people are very open because they don't have this history like we all have in our blood. We are the motive guys, as I am. We are really looking for traditional systems, and that's the reason why China is on the uh, second place. Yeah, US is behind, I would say, place number 10. Probably you have expected that they will be more in the front, more leading, the uh, American guys, but I think uh, if you're going through the US, there are some lighthouse projects for sure, Tesla and so on, you know this, uh, but overall, in the US, it's all the same, same. I was in Florida two weeks ago, and yeah, there's really no really change in the mobility system for that reason. Uh, yeah, place number 10. Germany, place number five, uh, the middle of nowhere a little bit. For sure, there are a lot of uh, ideas to changes. There are a lot of uh, talks, and of people also told, told us that they really will push the new mobility systems. But overall, there's a long way to go, and uh, that's the reason why we are not leading this for sure. We are leading technology for, uh, for the cars, but not, we are not leading technology for new mobility systems. But as I told you, as I showed you in the picture, the mobility system will change. And for that reason, we also have to speed up in Germany and also get the people uh, really aware of these new business models. So that was only a nutshell. I want to tell you a little bit our view, which are the main levers what's going on in the future, what could be the perspective 2030, what could be the perspective in profit pools that they will change. There will be uh, a major change in this, but looking to the, to the history, and you all know the history, but I, I still, I'm, I'm still impressed on this. Looking to New York in the Fifth Avenue in, 2000, in 
1900, and you saw, you see it over there, you all know this, but I'm, it's really impressive for, for me, in uh, 1900, in the Fifth Avenue, you see there's only one car over there, I don't know if you can see it, all horses, and nobody expected yeah, such a huge change, in only 13 years, you can see the same street in 1913, there's only one horse over there in the back, but the three changed to cars. And this also can happen. I'm not sure it will be also in, in 13 years or so, but I think we are facing a big challenge in the automotive industry. We are also fully aware of it, and we will see if we really will have this big change only in 13 years. Thank you for your attention. Are there any questions from your side or remarks or something like that? Or you are fully fine with it, yeah? looking for the new cars after the horses? Okay, no questions. Thank you again, having you here today. Bye-bye. <laughs>